This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I'm negotiating a trade for Christian McCaffrey, Devontae Adams, and Darren Waller in a dynasty league. So in dynasty, you have like super, super deep benches. And I just have like a stupid amount of uh, like resources to go out and get good players. So like I'm trying to make both those trades, but another trade just went through and it scared the shit out of me that somebody beat me to one of those guys. I'd be overpaying. So for all that, I'd be giving up four first round draft picks, uh, a second round draft pick, Noah Fant, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kareem Hunt, uh, Rondale Moore, and Rashad Bateman. So like I'm giving up a ton, mm-hmm. but it's to have a ridiculous starting lineup. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I have to make a trade offer. I just got confirmation I can make these trades. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I, like I'm excited to make the trade, but I'm really excited to see people's reaction when they see me land all three of those guys. <laughs> I'm going to offer it as a three-way trade, even though I could do them separately if I wanted to. I'm going to offer it as a three-way trade so it comes up and people just see me, like, get all that. All right, I'm all over the place. Okay, let's see. So I get Devontae Adams. I get Darren. Oh, wait, I need to look at which first-round draft picks he needs. He needs Toms and Bryans. Okay. Uh, I have three first-round draft picks next year from other trades and two the year after that. Oh, wow. So I'm trading four, but it's only two years' worth. Sorry, I know people don't care to hear about your fantasy leagues, but this is, I, I'm so excited right now. It's ridiculous how excited I am to make this trade. Um, I don't know what to do because if we start this thing and this thing goes through, I'm just gonna like need to talk about it, and nobody fucking wants to hear it, dude. This would be the bi- I've been playing fantasy football for this is, this is your epic geek out, so it's I have been playing fantasy football <laughs> since sixth grade. I've had some pretty crazy trades. I have a really fun story. Uh, I may have told you it before. Um, back in it was definitely in college, maybe like sophomore year. Oh my god, I think it went through. I just I just got a notification that a trade has been completed. I'm sorry. Good. It fucking went through. Oh my god! I added Devonte Adams, Christian McCaffrey, and Darren Waller in one trade. People are gonna fucking flip. Um, okay, I'm like in a fucking state of uh, euphoria right now. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> All right, right off the top, it needs to be said. I don't know what Stroh's is gonna be putting at the beginning of this show um but i just pulled off the biggest blockbuster trade probably in fantasy football history uh so i'm in a i'm in a mood uh i'm not gonna get into the details nobody cares state of euphoria yeah that's what i said (laughs) basically it's me naked with baby oil just rolling around in all of my own fun just to clarify that's a state of euphoria for you not for me yeah um it's the equivalent but without getting into all the details, nobody cares. I added Christian McCaffrey, Devontae Adams, and Darren Waller to a dynasty league team. And it, it's... <laughs> I like how you're like, not to get into any details, but I just added well, these no, no, three no. I mean, I'm going to share, share what I got because people know. <laughs> look, you don't have to know fantasy football to know that those three are good ads. However, what, what if we start up? breaking down Rondell Moore, <laughs> like you got to be a pretty freaking ridiculous dynasty nerd to understand that the value of... Uh, Rondell Moore, so we're not going to get into that. How many first-round picks did you give up? Four first-round picks, a second, and I believe five players. (laughs) One of the guys messaged me. Let's get into the deets. (laughs) One of the guys messaged me. I have no idea how you had that many resources, but congrats on getting them all. Um, (laughs) And no one else in the league could have made a trade like this, and that's why I'm so excited. But we we got some fun stuff to talk about today. We've probably gotten into this before. You guys know I have some issues with college football. Um, And as the SEC is adding Oklahoma and Texas, there's some uh, rumors that Kansas could be headed to the Big Ten. Supposedly the Big 12 and Pac-12 are talking about a partnership. I have an idea that I think, and it's not unique, but I really believe it fixes college football. And I want to ask if it would for you. Also, we got to get an update on my bed. Um, It's not very exciting. But but Stroh's wanted to fit oh, that in the Oh, I middle. look forward to this. This is this is what I've been dying for all week. I want to know how the new bed worked out, how you're feeling, what's going on. 
I can't wait for the middle segment. And then look, it's football season. Anybody listening to this podcast, I imagine, like, is starting to feel the excitement of football season. I know we're not there yet. Tomorrow's a Hall of Fame game. That doesn't do anything for some of you. It does for me. But I want to talk about are there other times of year, other things that feel like football season to you? Are there things that make you feel like a little kid again? Like you're so excited for this moment. Literally life-changing. I would say that. My life is better during football season. We want to talk about that. Uh, but first, Chris Hillis says the Tigers are spenders. Now, he didn't say it quite that out in front of it as I did. But he certainly implied that the Tigers are going to be interested in adding impact free agents as soon as this offseason. And Stros, you are having trouble buying that. I don't believe this man until I see this man do something. This is a guy who's got to put his money where his mouth is for me. Here's the thing. Chris Illich took over the Detroit Tigers in 2017 after Mike Illich passed away. And from the moment that he's taken over, this team has been a bottom dweller. Finishing dead last in Major League Baseball twice. Finishing bottom five once. Finishing bottom three once. This season has kind of been the the turnaround. And, and look, I think there's, you can make no bones about it. A.J. Hinch is obviously the MVP of this Detroit Tigers team. A.J. Hinch is the straw that stirs the drink for this team. And I think what you have is a guy who understands baseball at just a little bit of a deeper level and can put guys in positions to succeed. Now, I think that has Chris Illich buying into the vision that Al Avila has been selling him. I don't know about you. I don't really buy into Al Avila right yet. I know that he's done a couple of good things with the draft, but as far as free agency goes and as far as trading players, it's really been uh, a, a lot of lint and a lot of buttons inside your dirty jeans that you're getting back. It hasn't really worked out. So I think Chris Illich is buying into Al Avila, and I think Al Avila looks incredibly smart because he was able to go get A.J. Hinch. <laughs> I, I, don't. Do, I do think A.J. Hinch... <laughs> Is, is a game changer. Yeah, I think, absolutely. I think even if your GM is mediocre, AJ Hinch is going to help push that roster to another level. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's happening this year. I, I follow what you're saying, and I'm not necessarily here to tell you that I believe in Al Avila. I, I'm pretty indifferent in him. on him. Okay. I'm not excited about him like I'm excited about what the Pistons are doing or I'm excited, ex- or many are excited about what the Red Wings are doing. You know, it's easy to hit on your Casey Mises. You, like, you're supposed to. They're, they're right there for you. But I also don't know that we've – I agree. Trades haven't been there. I, it's hard to blame him for free agency. He's been working with nothing. Um, well, again, well, who does that kind of go to, though? That's on Chris Illich. You know, Chris Illich basically pulled up those purse strings and was like, look, we're not spending. So now all of a sudden Chris Illich is like, yeah, we'll start spending. We'll, we'll dump some money. Well, okay, well, who, cool. How much are we spending? What's the budget that we're talking about here? Do you realize this is this is a, a baseball team that if you were to take Miguel Cabrera's contract off of it, right? That was a contract that Chris Illich did not sign. That is a contract that Chris Illich cannot move out from underneath right now. The reason that it is on this roster is essentially for 500 home runs and possibly 3,000 hits. That's the only reason it's here. This this salary of this team would be at the very, very bottom of all of Major League Baseball. But the thing is, why why shouldn't it be? Like, I, of course, as a fan, you want your team to spend $250 million every year and always contend. Right. I'm not going to crush the Tigers for not doing that. So if, it, if you're not willing to spend $250 million every single year just so you're always contending, I wouldn't expect you – like, I want you to be at the top or the bottom. I have no need for you to be in the middle in, in your – rebuilding years. And I think we, bo- we, we both agree with that. We both agree with that. And, and you're right. It is fair to ask how much it Chris Illich is going to spend. You know, I, I think everybody in Detroit is hoping for Carlos Correa, including myself. Maybe he's not willing to go out and do that. I, I think that that would be a little bit concerning. Uh, however, I don't think it necessarily would signal a refusal to ever make that kind of a move because you do still have a, a useless Miguel Cabrera contract on the books. Uh, here's what I believe, Strauss. I believe that the Tigers right now are in the bottom 10 in in spenders. I believe they're right at 10, uh, the 20th most expensive payroll in baseball. Um, I'm not telling you they're going to be top three or top five, but I think when it comes time to win, the Tigers are at least going to give it a chance. And I think the timing of when Chris Illich said that is important. The reason I I, I bring that up is because there is a very noticeable energy around the Tigers right now that has not been there in five or six years. 
And I think that Chris Illich is recognizing that there's a limited window to capitalize on that. If they come out next year and can't scratch 500, people aren't going to continue to be excited. Mm -hmm. There's a very short window when a young team starts playing well that people are ready to buy in. And we're there. You know, There's a lot of momentum with this team right you're now. You're seeing games, like at games, especially weekend games, you know, crowds that are really into it. I can tell you from listening to, to local sports radio in Detroit, there's a Tiger fan base ready to call and talk about baseball that's n- not been there for a very long time. And I think he's going to be willing to spend enough to keep that momentum. Because at the end of the day, you are limited in how much you can make if nobody's going to games. And, and I really believe a team that competes for the playoff next year. I don't even think they have to make it. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what gets you into a wild card in a regular season. But if they can win 85, 86, you know, close to 90 games next year, that's a reasonable goal, right? Let's say 85. That, that, that's, a, that's a good team. If you can do that, that's a, that's a well, good team. I mean, 85 team. is barely above 500. That's a, a good enough team for, for next year. If you could be looking at 85 wins or maybe even 80, I'll say 80 for safe, like right around that 500 mark. Yeah. I think people are going to games – like all the time next year. And, and, and again, maybe he's not willing to go out and spend on Correa, but I, I, one, I think it's very much a play. I do. Uh, and, and two, I just, I think that no matter what, they're going to go out and add pieces who will be upgrades next year in free agency. He has to, at this point, like you said, there is a, a bit of a fever with the Detroit Tigers right now. There's a lot of momentum uh, spinning forward with this team. And the perfect way to basically set yourself back and kind of take yourself back to uh, that that 2018, 2019 season is to go out and basically do nothing in free agency. And this is a team that is is in dire need of a shortstop. This is a team that is in dire need of a of a bat with some power. If you look at this lineup, if you look at the everyday lineup, there is nobody that makes any pitcher scared in Major League Baseball. They don't have anybody. Look, I'm including Miguel Cabrera. At this advanced age and what he's doing right now, Miguel Cabrera scares absolutely nobody. You've got nobody in that lineup, on that roster, that is like, oh, we got to pitch around him or, oh, we got to kind of work something out here. We've got to come up with some type of pitch. Do you realize that Eric Haas was was your player of the month last year and Eric Haas has basically been leading your team? This is a guy that the Detroit Tigers released – and then they ended up bringing him back after I think it was the Twins released him. And the dude's proving to have found some stuff, but he's a 28-year-old rookie. Right. Like, what do you expect from, from a guy who's, again, that's a little bit of an advanced age for a rookie? I, I don't know. A little what, bit. It's a very I don't know what you're expecting to get from this guy. But, look, I, I like what I'm seeing, and I like the fact that you've got a manager who is able to put guys like a 28-year-old rookie in a position to succeed, and he's getting the absolute best out of them. I think if you're Chris Illich, you have to go out and you have to spend some money. And I'm not telling you to break the bank, but what I'm saying is you have to go do it. You can't just talk about it. You actually have to be about it. And I won't believe him until I see him open up that checkbook. And we'll get moving on here in just a second. But for one, I don't know why you offer that up. I don't know why you say that and then lie. Like, I, I, I guess I don't know. Maybe Chris Illich has a history of doing that. But if you say you're going to spend, like mm-hmm. he's going to spend on some level. Maybe we'll be disappointed, but there's no way the Tigers come out of this next free agency with no impact players because that is a really bad look as an owner. Uh, but two, I, see, one of the reasons we did a topic a while back about how I was excited because the, the Tigers had their first long-term piece in, in Hinch. I don't think you go out and get Hinch if you're not serious about trying to win. Again, That doesn't mean a top three payroll, top five payroll. But I think the Tigers could very realistically double their payroll um, with the intention of trying to win. I'm not saying next year, but over the next few years. um, It's just hard for me to believe that they make some of the I agree with what you're saying. AJ Hinch is, is the is the integral piece here. That is that is the piece that that tells you that this team is ready to win or wants to win. Yeah, they want to. Okay. Now, Chris Illich comes out and he says he's willing to spend money next year. The, the, the issue for me is that right there. He says he's ready to spend money next year. Does he spend money next year or does he spend it the I year after? That. Why, why would he say that? Why wouldn't he just say, I feel like we're another year away? We I have some like, promising I, pieces in Torkelson mm-hmm. and Green who will be up in another year. We'll let, get some development and, and you know, give it another year or so. You just talked about it. There, there's, there's this momentum. This is a team that that basically has 
captured the the imagination of the city again, and they're being talked about. So how do you keep that spinning forward at we least talked, to the end of the year? I don't think he needed to say that to keep – the momentum will last to the end of the year. The question mm-hmm. is on opening day next year, are fans excited and ready to go? Um, we talked last week, I think it was, about being afraid to be hurt by these mm-hmm. force teams. And I think that's what's going on with you. I think that you you are afraid – that you're going to get excited for the Tigers, and then they're going to run out a bunch of young dudes who don't make any money again next year. And I don't see it, man. There's too many things. One, it comes down to three things. One, the momentum we've talked about. Two, the manager you hired. And three, he said it. You don't say you're going to spend money just to say it. I don't know. He's He is a uh, uh, an owner that has has said a lot of things, to be honest with you. Especially with everything that's gone on with uh, with with uh, Little Caesars Arena and and putting things in and around the city around Little Caesars Arena, things just haven't happened. Things just haven't haven't come to fruition like he said that they were. Uh, so it, it's one of those things for me that when he when he says it, I'm usually apprehensive. I, I just got to take a wait and see approach, and that's where I'm at with it. I'm taking the wait and see approach. I, I don't know. Uh, what he's going to spend, I'm not sure what he's willing to spend, and I'm not sure where he's at as far as what he wants to do with this team next year. And that makes me scared because I feel like you have a you've got a a a manager in AJ Hinch who is heads and tails above arguably just about anybody else. Like I think he's he's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you've got a GM who I think we can both agree doesn't really make us feel safe and secure. Um, and then when it comes to the owner, I, you feel more secure with him than I do. And that, that's okay. I just don't feel like when he says he's going to do something, he's actually going to follow through. And until he follows through, I'm just going to kind of take that wait and see approach. Uh, I feel like, uh, this should be Missouri because it's the show me state. Show me, Chris, you've got to show me, put your money where your mouth is. All right. Again, I'm going to try and fix college football. At least my version of fix college football coming up in a little bit. I guess, do you want to get to the bed update first? Yeah, let's go to the bed, man. Let's go to the bed. Well, first off, first off, I I was, I was, (laughs) that's good to know. I was told that I have to ask you, did you go to the movies and did you try Reese's Pieces with popcorn? This is funny because I was going to text her about it. And then I was like, "Uh, I'll just wait and share it on the podcast. Yes. I went to the movies. Yes. I tried it. Uh, I would like to issue a complaint. First of all, I pre-ordered the popcorn and my drink and the Reese's on uh, online before I went. Let me just say, the whole experience, the ticket, the uh, the drink, the, the popcorn, like everything. What do you think it cost me? So I got a large drink, a large popcorn, a candy, and a movie ticket for a Friday night. So I'm gonna say your movie ticket was probably 15 bucks. Popcorn was probably closer to 10. Drink was probably closer to seven. Your candy was probably five. So fifteen, thirty seven, forty two bucks. I spent forty dollars even. Okay. Um that's really good. I don't think I would have guessed that. As someone who doesn't go to movies all that often. I was not prepared for a fifteen dollar movie ticket. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. But anyways, I pre ordered, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't have butter. What? My cheat meal was popcorn and they were out of butter. The, uh, the movie uh, theater's out of butter. It mm, the, co- mm, co- <laughs> <laughs> Did COVID have an impact on the butter supply? Well, uh, there, COVID had a major impact on the supply chain. I'm, I'm assuming it's re- related to that. They just, yeah, there's probably a shortage of butter, dude, right now. And it was, I mean, look, I still enjoyed it, yeah. but it was supposed to be my cheat meal, and it was pretty underwhelming for that. As far as the popcorn and the Reese's pieces, I salty. I prefer salty than sweet, or sweet than salty. I preferred switching back and forth. And that's what I did: popcorn, Reese's, popcorn, Reese's. Um, it was okay together. She even gave me the ratio to use, which, uh, oh God, what was it? I <laughs> think it was two to three pieces of popcorn to one or two Reese's pieces. I don't remember she, exactly. She's like a scientist with I it. did try her, her ratio. Big surprise, guy who loves desserts. The ratio that worked best for me was two <laughs> Reese's pieces. Reese's pieces two Reese's pieces, pieces to one piece of, piece of popcorn. Um, but ultimately, my favorite way to do it was just to switch back and forth. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate the the... The experiment uh, <laughs> recommendation, and it, it was—I could see why somebody would love it. Do you, do you have a, a cheat meal lined up for this week then? So uh, I love—we can do this every single middle segment. So here's where I'm actually struggling right now, and maybe like, dude, I don't know. This middle segment is going to be the whole show um, once again. As I love we, our middle segment, we talked great. by the way. 
uh, we've talked about eliminating the sports out of this podcast. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we have talked Multiple about times. <laughs> just doing the middle segment and just talking about life shit. So I haven't totally decided. I kind of want to get this place called Raising Cane's. It is my favorite fast food in existence. It and literally all they serve is chicken tenders and fries. And so, like, you, here's what happens: basically, you order a meal, mm-hmm. and you just with the meal size you want. How many chicken tenders do you want? So if you get three, it comes with just fries. If you get or no fries and Texas toast. If you get four, it comes with uh, fries, Texas toast, and coleslaw. If you get five, it also comes with all that. And no matter what you do, it comes with a, a, a pop. Uh, but it's the, the 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 chicken is so good. They have their own sauce, cane sauce that's incredible. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that. But here's the problem: I haven't had fast food now. Today marks three weeks. Is your stomach gonna revolt and hate you? Oh, I'm not worried about that. It would be totally worth it. I honestly have literally no concerns about that aspect of it. <laughs> Like, totally worth it. It's cool. I'm in the shitter for days. It's great. As somebody who really struggles with eating too much fast food, it's – I mean it's a very genuine source of pride when I'm able to go this long without it. Like mm-hmm. I, like full disclosure, twice in my life I have gotten to a place where I was eating fast food at least five days a week, including before I started eating healthy right now. Um, in fact, the first – but when I lost 40 pounds when I lived in Grand Rapids, I was eating fast food probably seven times a week at that point. Um and so and, and like some of it's that it's convenient, but to be totally honest with you, a lot of it's that I love it. I love fast food. I don't like I don't think it's just convenient. I think it tastes really good. Um, so I went nine months without eating fast food back before I moved down here. And I was super proud of that. And, you know, the moment it was gone, the moment that was broken, it was, I had no incentive to keep it. Going. It was like the floodgates opened. Exactly. So here. So as like an undercover fat kid. So when, when we when we first started talking about doing this again, right, I was in probably arguably some of the best shape of my life. I was going through some like the worst shit in my entire life, but I was in like the best shape of my life. Right. I was down to like a, a solid 175 and I was I was pretty cut up. And then I ended up moving back home. And look, I love I'm, I'm like you. I love dessert. I love sweets. If, if they're in the house, I'm eating them. It doesn't matter what it is. I get home from work, right? And I will go to uh, Alyssa's cabinet and I will grab uh, a Reese's uh, Pieces or I'll grab uh, some chocolate or I will. And it's like just goes in my mouth and I nonstop eat candy. I love it. As a diabetic, it's horrible for you, but it's what I crave, uh, especially when I'm hungry. I crave it so much. Um, so I'm now up about 20 pounds maybe a little bit more, maybe 25 pounds. I'm like right around two bills. And it's like, it's, it's just gross, man. Like when the stuff is in the house, I just, I eat it. So like, I kind of get where you're at and it's, it's hard for me to kind of detox from that sugar. Once I get it out of my system, I'm good and I don't crave it, but it's getting to the point where you can kind of flush your system and purge it to where you can kind of just go on and be regular. So I will say this, and I'm actually really curious to hear your thoughts on this. So a part of me doesn't want to do that because I want to – like the place I'm in right now, I feel fairly confident I can get another really long streak going if mm-hmm. I want to. But I almost question if that's less sustainable because let's say I go nine months again. There will probably be a day when I have fast food again. Mm-hmm. And if my streak is gone, you know, do I lose all incentive again? Because that's what happened. I mean it was floodgates. Um, whereas if I say, hey, look, it's been three weeks. I'm proud of that, but I'm going to have it this Friday. I think that might be more sustainable to have it occasionally because I don't think the floodgates will open after three weeks. After three weeks, it's like, okay, I'm proud of what I did, but like this is a cheat meal. After nine months, it's like the reason I'm not getting it is because I haven't gotten it. So I actually think it's probably more sustainable to occasionally do it. I don't know if I try to limit myself to like once a month. Um, but I just think that I would, it would be way more sustainable for me in that going that direction. I think in your case, but I'm case, so proud. I don't want to let it go. <laughs> I think in your case, that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, indulge in it. Sometimes, uh, allow yourself to have that cheat meal, allow yourself to have that, that fast food, you know, once, uh, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever you decide, you, you probably don't have to abstain from it. I know for me, for myself, because I'm like a, I'm like, honestly, it's like a crack fiend. Uh, I, I get a little bit of candy or I get a little bit of sugar and I'm like, Ooh, I need more. And I, I can't, I can't stop. So like when, when I talk to you about like Oreo tasting and I tell you, I eat like a whole sleeve of Oreos. It's, I know, roll your eyes. Cool. But, but, 
but like that's need chill, dude. I eat the whole fucking bag. That, that's like that's like a lot for me. And I'm like, I'm diabetic. I shouldn't be eating that yeah. stuff. But I, I I do, you know. So like my mom, my mom will make me uh my own pumpkin pie, right? So like for my birthday, mom was like, What kind of what kind of cake do you want? She's like, Do you even like cake? And I was like, No, nah, I really don't like cake. And she was like, Well, do you want pie? And I was like, I hate cherry pie. I think it's gross. Um, I don't really care for apple pie unless it's like homemade. So I was like, I'm, I don't really need anything. I'm good. She's like, well, what about a pumpkin pie? I love my mother's pumpkin pie. It, it's so damn good. It, it is the one thing I look forward to on Thanksgiving uh, is her pumpkin pie. And she was like, I'll make you a pumpkin pie for your birthday. She made two pumpkin pies for me. She made three. She made one for my dad, my stepdad. She made one for me and for my birthday. And then she made one for me to take home. And when I tell you I mashed that out in three days, it was like nonstop just shoveling it into my face <laughs> because I love that shit. You know, and I just I, when it comes to sweets, man, I've got zero, zero self-control. I mean, obviously, I relate. Um, I, I, I have I think I'd be the same about sweets. I have kept sweets out of the house. And I think that that's something that unfortunately, like I have to do mm-hmm. um, like my sweets. I don't know if we talked about it. There are two things I go to. It's peanut butter. Yeah, we did a spoonful of peanut butter or uh uh, or, or yogurt, but the, the sweets I have to keep out of the house. I think the fast food, um, I'm deep enough in that it does feel like a habit now. Mm-hmm. And I don't think one would break it. Okay. Um, it sucks though, man, because like the, there is so much pride in going like nine months. Like, and honestly, like we, I know we talked about it back then. I didn't, I didn't even actually go nine months. I had one exception to my rule. I wasn't allowed to eat fast food except for Taco Bell tacos. Now it was only tacos, but like, I just left myself an exception because it was a healthy or fast food item that I happened to get with a friend that I hung out with a lot. So like I wanted to, I didn't want to not be able to do that. Was this um, the lady friend? The lady friend. Was it a lady friend? Yes. I just, I didn't know. I, I was honestly curious if you're familiar of a specific lady friend. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it was a lady friend. And honestly, you could say the lady friend. I just don't know if you're familiar with the lady friend. I'm trying to think of which one it could be. Uh, mm, were you were you in? We're Houston still friends. It's a very long time. Oh, okay. Uh, long okay. No, this was nope, I know who it is. Okay. Yep. No, we're good. Okay. Um. <laughs> anyways, so uh, do you want bed updates? Yes, I want bed updates the all lady day long. Involved with with uh, bed updates. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I don't have much for you. You you were oh, excited. Wait, so you got your bed on Friday, right? Uh, or you got it on Saturday? I think, I think it was Thursday. I don't know, okay. man. I had a okay. Problem. So you got it at the end of last week. All right. So it, they, they they bring your bed to you and they set it all up. And when you got your bed, did you do the thing that that uh, my girlfriend forces me to do when we go to a hotel where you got to jump on the bed? No, I, I you, you didn't jump on your bed. It's my own bed. I'm not trying to like break. Right. But Dude, you got to okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're about two bucks. I'm about three. I'm not trying to break the box. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you so you got your bed. Um, I don't know. How was your first night on it? Was it? Was it nice? I mean, was it great? It obviously so, better than a, than an air mattress. So, um, yeah, it's way more comfortable, obviously. I haven't talked about the issues I'm having with, like, so I'm having issues with, like, my, my hands going numb, uh, especially when I'm sleeping. It's happening during the day, too, but really bad when I'm sleeping. Um, I slept, like, three or four straight nights on the air mattress where it wasn't happening, so I just thought, like, it was done. N- done's the wrong way to put it, but, like, it had gotten a lot better, be it the meds I'm taking or that the problem had been solved, uh, and then as soon as I switch back to my bed, it's happening again. Have you tried? Have you tried sleeping with braces on your hands? No, no, because my hands go numb too, like a lot, especially when I use my hands a lot. Like basically, I wake up in the middle of the night, my hands are like I don't know. You can you can see this, but they're kind of curled up into into themselves. Uh, so you yeah, sleep with that, some braces. That doesn't sometimes happen. it helps. That okay. doesn't happen to me. Um, so I, I, I have no idea what it's related to. So, like I had one suspicion I had was like my neck positioning because uh, it's really bad for you. But I'm like a three to four pillow sleeper um, and on an air mattress, you can't do that. It's so uncomfortable. So I was only using one. Um, so like I've tried to switch to one pillow in my bed and mixed results. I've had some days that are good, some days that are bad. I don't know if it's related. I have no idea if it was just a random thing or if it's like related to the way I'm sleeping. But like that was pretty disappointing. So it's, it's taken some of the excitement away from the bed. Uh, but I will say this. Um, I move in and out of bed a lot throughout the day. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but like I don't just lay in bed at night. Like I get home and one of the first things I do is lay in bed for 10, 15 minutes. Um, and it is far more enjoyable for that 
than the, like let plopping down in an air mattress after work. Oh, well, yeah, I'm sure it's got to be 10 times better. So you've had it for almost, a almost a week now. Um, I, I know you're still having the issues with your hands going numb. Um, and you're not as comfortable as, as you would like, but do you find that you at least get a good night of sleep? Like I'm, I'm, I'm notorious for waking up four or five times in the middle of the night. I roll around a lot when I sleep. Uh, I don't stay stationary when I sleep. It's, it's, like, it's a different I'm, day, day. I'm similar. I wake up a lot in the night too. Um, I've had some good night's sleep. Some, it's honestly the the excitement of the mattress. It was exciting, but I don't know that that the update was. There's not a lot to share. It's it's an it is a noticeably nice mattress. It is a very comfortable mattress, um, and I'm glad to have it. But uh, no exciting stories to share. The million dollar question: Have you broke it in yet? What do you, you know? Think? What I mean? What do you think? No. Yeah. <laughs> Such right. a letdown, B. <laughs> uh, we got to move, man. This has been a long middle segment. We it haven't even got to the one. main one. Um, <laughs> do you want to do it, or do you just want to punt on to our uh, co- college football talk? No, man, you're excited for this. What are you looking well, forward so, to for the rest of the year? Well, first, you, you, like like you gave me the, last night, you gave me a, a text message list that looks something similar to what Santa Claus unfurls <laughs> to see who's been naughty or nice. So you're excited for this one. Let's do it. Well, Dude, if you want, if you want, we can punt up mega conferences and save it for next week. The first I don't care. thing that came to mind for me is Christmas because like football season feels like Christmas, right? The arrival of football season is so exciting. It's the best time of year and, and all that. And I think a lot of people grow out of that excitement at Christmas. Like when you learn Santa's not real, when you get old enough that the presents aren't as exciting. Um, but I still love Christmas. I, and, and I think some of it is being away from home. You know, I, I the closest I've lived to home in the last five years is 150 miles away. So um, it is literally the only time I see a lot of my family. And, and because I was in a relationship like right out of high school and through college, I kind of like saw how difficult um, holidays were. And to be honest with you, that there, there was times when I was like, I don't even enjoy holidays because of that. Um, so I kind of always thought by this age – that I wouldn't see my aunts and uncles anymore on holidays. Maybe my grandparents, but I just didn't think the big, you know, cousins, aunts, uncles, all that would be happening anymore. Like I, I thought those people would be entirely out of my life at this point, and they're not. And I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm obviously a very people oriented person. I love people, and so just the time of year is really exciting for me. And it's not just the day of Christmas or Christmas Eve, but like. Getting into November and December, it's funny because like I don't watch Christmas movies, but seeing them advertised to me makes me feel like Christmas time. It just uh, I am much like football season just makes me happier. Uh, the holiday season kind of does the same thing. Like I talked about it, I'm sure on the podcast last November, I bought a a, a pumpkin roll, like cheesecake. Uh, you know what I'm talking I about? Talk about this. Yep. I bought one of those and it just made me feel like the holidays. It's just a happy feeling. Um, so that's one for me. And then here's one more and it's not a time of year, but I think it's a fun one. Unfortunately, this one has kind of changed, but everyone who listens to this podcast knows how much I've loved Fortnite. And every season they're in like season 16 right now, every time they hit a new season, there's massive changes to the game. There's new guns, the map changes, there's like new dynamics and I never did it and I regret it because now we don't, we, I still love the game and still play the game, but not like we used to. Um, every time a new season came up, it made me want to take time off of work to just binge playing Fortnite because it was like getting to experience my favorite game all over again for the first time. And, like and when Madden comes out and everybody takes the day off to play Madden for 24 or 48 hours. No. It, it, Madden's really exciting. And like, I remember I literally rode my bike to the store to buy Madden the day it came out when I was young. Um, but it's different because it's a new game. Like so much changes. Madden's mostly okay. a roster update. Yeah. Fortnite makes dramatic changes, ever, like dramatic okay. changes every single season. And so it's really fun to like, you don't know what's coming. It's fun to get on and explore and, and see your new changes. Um, I think everybody has those things that they look forward to. You tell me you don't, I don't fucking believe you. <laughs> what is something aside from football that just gets you so excited for it? Oh man. You know, I, I've been thinking about this all day long because your text message, like I said, you sent me like this, this novel of, of things I did, that you're, okay, that okay. you're I'm going to pull back the curtains for a second. <laughs> Some t- 
times Strohs <laughs> makes up complete bullshit and I just let it go. <laughs> this is one of those times, except I'm this not. This is me it selling our topic here. <laughs> it's bullshit. You can you sell our topic. You sent me like six things that you're pumped about. <laughs> you can sell a topic without lying to our audience, Strohs. You sent me like six things. I said, okay, you're, I said, you're like, what are you excited for? And I was like, nothing. I did send you like six text messages, but like two of them were related to this topic. <laughs> and I was like, nothing. I'm excited for nothing. And here's the thing. Uh, this is something I realized listening to some of our listening to some of our old podcasts. When when things in my life aren't necessarily right, I'm a miserable, miserable fuck. Like I really am. And it I is it's 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 weird the way it comes out, right? So like you go back and you listen to I think it was like episode eight that we did. And I don't know, I listened back to it and I was like, holy cow. Like I was so unhappy in my life. And a lot of it had to do with my with my marriage. It was awful. Um, but I was like, wow, like I didn't even realize that. Like, I don't know how you did a show with that guy for so damn long. I mean, it was only eight episodes, but I don't know how you did it. But um me and you talk a lot before our shows in, in I, I, like I've got about 30 I minutes feel of so guilty because like you have such a long day and like, I enjoy hanging out and talking, but I feel like I'm like keeping you. No, no, it's great. I love, I love talking to you. I love, I love the, I really do. We, I know how you brought up how we, we talked about just kind of obliterating the sports topics here. Like if we could just take the, the, the kind of the, <laughs> The just hang show? out. Just hang out on the yeah. Water, on just take the pre-show yeah. and just like tape that and and just put that out there. I think I think more people would appreciate that because it's just two dudes just I'll be basically honest. catching up every week. It would be interesting because like I, I feel like and honestly, Strohs, feel free to be honest about it here. I feel like I'm pretty genuine and honest with who I am on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But I think if you took the pre-show, it's so raw. Oh, it is. It's like, so much raw. I'm it's the kind raw. of person who I'm very easy to open up to people um, without even knowing them. But if I really know you, there is like no, like Stroh's knows me, knows me. Like there's really no part of me. <laughs> that's true. Honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to say that right here, right now, Stroh's. I don't know if you're aware of this. We've like hung out in person twice. The list of people who know as much about me as you do is maybe zero. Maybe we have we have a very maybe interesting one. relationship. It's yeah. like I don't like I don't know if you know this, but I really do appreciate. This is going to basically go into us blowing each other now. But I really appreciate. <laughs> I really appreciate our relationship, and I really appreciate how it started, and I really appreciate that we've got gotten to this point because. I, we've talked about this before. The first couple times that I don't know, I heard you on the radio, and in our personalities, I was like, "This guy, he just we're gonna doesn't blow get out. it." We're gonna blow out the third topic. We're not doing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask you. What do you want to do with that? I remember sending you the message to start the show, mm-hmm. uh, and it was originally planned as an on-air show, not not a podcast. Um, but you talked about how your first eight episodes, you were really not in a great place. Um, so after my breakup, I went through basically a year where I like just my I just didn't live my life at all. Like I moved into a new apartment and then my breakup happened maybe a week later. And I've always been a slow unpacker. Anywhere I've ever moved, I've been a slow unpacker. But Strohs, I lived in a bedroom with a mattress on the ground, not because I didn't have uh, 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 what is it called? A bed frame. I just didn't put it together. And. Basically, every single thing I owned that was not a a daily essential thing was in boxes. I lived in a room with probably 10 moving boxes that were packed for, I'm not exaggerating, six to eight months. And it didn't help that the roommate that I live with, like, he also was dealing with some shit, probably in a worse place than I was. We had a couch. I shit you not. Our place was so unpacked or so packed, like not, you know, we never unpacked it. um, And it's just such a mess. We had a couch standing vertically up against the wall because we didn't have space for it. Um, and, and the start of me, like, getting back to a place where I was living my life and, you know, happy with my life, um, the very beginning of it, I just started going to the mall and walking and listening to music four or five days a week. And I literally messaged you while I was at the mall walking one day. Like, I, I, like I was just starting to, like, you know, I, I started therapy around that same time. And I started, like, part of it was, like, okay, I need to, like, do things that I like because I'm literally not doing that. Um, And I was like, okay, well, I really love making content. 
I really think Stros and I would do a good show together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just messaged you. I was like, hey, would you be interested in this? Um, and it's just like, it just comes to my mind because like you talk about you not being in a good place when we started the podcast. Me messaging you came from like at the very beginning of me starting to like really fix my life. Get out of that place, yeah. I, I remember um, there was a point where I think being you, you, I think you filled in for probably Drew and me and you had some back and forth on a show. I remember, or maybe you filled in for Jim and me and you had some back and forth on a show. And I remember going home that night and it was late and I, I messaged big drew and I said, Hey, I know it's late. I'm sorry. I don't mean to bother you. I was like, but if you guys ever are, are looking for a show or you guys are ever looking, there's, there's just some extra where we could kind of fill in. I was like, I really do think me and B, because we're polar opposites, would do a great job together. And that was like, that was, I think, probably a couple weeks before you ended up actually messaging me. And he was like, okay, that's good to know. We'll see. He's like, maybe you guys can do a podcast or something. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, maybe it's possible. So then it was just trying to figure out timing. Um, but yeah, it was weird because right around the same time, we had the same thought with each other. So it was, it was really interesting. Um, but I say that to try to bring this back full circle. Um, you messaged me, you're like, what are you looking forward to? And I was like, nothing, like nothing. And like, we talked before the show about where I'm at with work and kind of how I'm not incredibly satisfied at my current job and some of the stresses that come with it. So I'm like, I think, I think some of me not being excited about things is just kind of where I'm at as far as my work life goes. Yeah, I get that. Um, and it just kind of carries over into, and this is the thing about me too, like work is incredibly important. I think I've only had uh, like one, maybe two jobs that I've been incredibly proud of my entire life. And, and that was working uh, at the radio station. I was incredibly proud of that. Like I tell everybody, I'm like, yeah, I used to work in radio. <laughs> and they all just look at me like I'm some kind of weird pariah. It's great. So I don't know. You know, like I, like, I take a lot of pride. Like I sit at work and I listen to a lot of uh, gym shows now as he's filling in for, for Mike. And it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I'm so proud of that guy for, for doing what he's doing, you know? I thought about it like a lot and I think I mentioned it before on this show, but I, 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 I mean, I've had a lot of jobs in radio, which is crazy because I've only been in it for five years. Mm-hmm. Um, but that show had such a feel to it that like, I never worked with Shay. Shay, the Detroit producer after you mm-hmm. was trained the week that I was leaving. I have basically no interactions with him, but I feel literally as though he is a part of the show family. Mm-hmm. I think the same thing with Chris, like, and Fongers, like, and even Jeff Risden, who, you know, filled in. Like, oh, I love Risden. I feel a relationship with everybody on that show um, so much stronger than, like, a co-worker for a period of time. Or, in Shay's case, literally not even a co-worker. Um, because, yeah, no, that, that show was something, like, I, I agree with you, that I feel genuinely proud to have been a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, like, you know, I, I, <laughs> I messaged him recently because, like, I, I talk to Jim all the time. But like I messaged Drew, it's like I miss Drew. Like I miss being a like you know, uh, being a part of that uh, group all the time. So I feel you, I do. Um, and you know, I would I would kill to 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 help you find a spot somewhere in radio. Oh yeah, no, I know. We we talk. That's part of our uh, our pre show. <laughs> well, I stopped. I've, I've kind of stopped because you've kind of said like you you have accepted that 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 time is done. Um, but yeah, no, we regularly. I used to like like hey like. There's this. So, like, I tried my hardest to, like, help figure something out. But it's tough, man. And unfortunately, like, you spent a lot of time looking at the toughest time ever. Uh, <laughs> because things, like, there were not jobs for, like, the last year. Um, well, I'm, I am, uh, I'm sorry to hear that that's why you're not excited for it. <laughs> um, it sucks. I'll tell I, you this I, much. I'm excited for next week when we get to talk about mega conferences and your idea for college football. Th- that, that's going to get carried over to next week. Are you week. excited for football at least? Oh yeah, like football. I'm, I'm football shines through. Yeah, football. I'm excited for. I don't know uh, if I like, should. Like, what, what are we? Like, I think we have a preseason game this week, or is it next week? Tomorrow is the Hall of Fame game. Okay. Well, tomorrow, as of recording, I think okay. it'll probably so, like, be yesterday. So, so this really Thursday, uh, Hall of Fame game takes place, and then uh, basically we're less than what, like a month away. We're like twenty some days out, twenty five days out from actual games. So yes, that has me excited. We are in get excited about your your trade fantasy football. Uh, <laughs> if you missed it, you can rewind and go right back to the very front of this episode. All right. Yeah. Next week we will talk uh, probably unless some crazy shit happens 
uh, I would expect to talk about the conference realignment and my idea to fix college football. Uh, but otherwise, I guess we, we, we leave it there, Stros. It's very, it's very weird to just, like, drop it in the middle. I feel like we got half a show to go. Yeah, it's – I don't – look, man, that middle topic is our best topic. So maybe sometimes, one day, sometimes it just takes over. Maybe one day we will either scrap the, the sports or we'll add a second podcast. Who knows?